to look at long questions. I just did long questions with you. Okay, now we're going to do more, okay, similar examples, similar calculations, okay, as the ones we did before the break. Okay, so these should be okay. Obviously, in the exam, you need to try to split your time. So, use half of the time, so one hour for the multiple choice and one hour for the written. Okay, so a little bit of, um, let's say, practice for you to do for next week. Okay, so we've got multiple choice here. Um, how many questions? 25. Okay, so they, they didn't even ask you that many in this question. Okay, I remember last week you were um, a bit tired after all those multiple choice questions because there were so many. Right, here there aren't that many. Mm -hmm. Right, so can you try do these 25 questions for next week? Okay. okay. And then we'll check them. Okay, so we'll go through the answers. We'll double check the ones that you've done and we'll see which options are you choosing. Um, remember, you need how much to pass this section. Well, out of how much is this one? 25 marks. Seven. There should be 25 questions here. Let's check. Yes, there are. Okay, so how many questions do you need to get right? 17. No, half of it. No. So... 12, 13. 13, yes. Okay, so I want to check next week if you're able to answer 13 of these 25 correctly. Think you can do that? Yeah. Okay, you should be able to. It, it shouldn't be that bad, okay, because it's, it's multiple choice as well, okay, and they're not as long as the long questions. Obviously, in this particular paper, okay, May June 2016, right, a lot of the marks were, were weighted for the long. Okay, 45 out of 70 was allocated to long questions. Okay, so this paper had a bigger emphasis on your written rather than your multiple choice. Okay. Okay, so make sure you are comfortable with these workings and how to approach a question. Okay, so how do we approach a question? What are we going to do? Well, we're going to read it. Good. So you read the question once and then you look at the required. Then you draw up the templates and then you go back and then you, you pull out the information that you require. Do you agree? Yes. Okay, so read the question and highlight things that stand out for you. Okay. Major Limited Manufacture of High Quality Widgets has maintained stable sales and profits over the past seven years. Although the market for the widgets had been expanding, Nagat had been unsuccessful in sharing in this growth due to technical problems with its current machine. To increase its production, the company is considering replacing the current machine with more technologically advanced model. Okay, so it's going to be another replacement. Good. Okay, so do you see how often they test replacement? Because replacement is more complicated because do you need to provide for the old? Yes. Yes. Okay, so then you've got details of the current machine, which is what? The old or the new? Old. Yes. Okay, so there's the cost, there's the realizable value, and there's the book value. Do you agree? Yeah. That's going to be used where? For the new. No, for the, you just said current. Oh, uh, for the old. Okay, so the cost is what you've got. Realizable value means what? What you're going to get for it. Okay, the proceeds that I would get from this particular asset now. Okay, it produces widgets on this machine. The output as is, is as follows. So is that current? Yes. Okay, that's what the machine can do currently. Do you agree? Yes. Okay, then you've got details of the new machine. You've got cost, variable cost, fixed cost, output. Okay, new machine. So now this is for the other part of the working. Okay, because you need mm. both new and you need old. Remember that? Yes. Okay, 
The selling price per widget is 8 Rand. Both machines will be written off on a straight line basis over 5 years and they will have no residual value. Does that help? Yes. Yes, because now you know TCF is going to be 0 because there's yeah. no residual value. Make sense? Yeah. Okay, the firm uses discounted cash flows to evaluate each proposal and uses a required return of 10% after tax. After tax is important because tax is a relevant cost. Right, the normal tax is 29% throughout the period. Okay, question number one asks you to do what? The initial investment for the okay. new machine. Yes, for the new machine. So, it's four marks. What does that require? It requires the formula. Okay, so there's the equation. Write it down. Substitute and solve. You're looking for this. The installed cost of the new minus the after-tax proceeds of the old. Okay, think you can pull out the right figures there? Tammy? Hello? Can you pull out the right figures? Okay, but you need to put the screen on. Okay, so here's it then. Okay, well the cost is the 30... Wait, are we doing the new, hey? Well, you need both, new and old. So start with the new is fine. Okay. So that would be the 30,000. Mm -hmm. Okay, there are no installation costs. Correct. There you go, you really got the first answer. Okay. Old. Then... Okay, let me just write down. <laughs> okay, so for the old, the cost would be the 35,000. Do I use costs? Oh no. I use the after tax proceeds of the old. So? No, I mean, I'm thinking of that other one we did. Um. Okay, so we're going to do the proceeds of the old. Which is? Um, we need to work out the... Come, proceeds of the old is what? Well, the cost minus the selling. Uh -oh. No, proceeds is what you can sell it for, so... What can you sell the old for? The 20,000. Yes. What's the tax on that? Um, 29. Yes. Okay. But it's only on the capital gain. Do you agree? Okay. What is the asset worth? 20. And what can you sell it for? 20. No. You're mixing up. Okay. Its book value is 16. So I can sell it for 20. It is worth 16. Isn't that what you've got here? Okay. Okay. So don't mix up the two. This is what? What you can sell Sorry. it for. This is what it's worth. Okay. Okay, so how much are you going to get taxed on? 4,000? Yes. At what percent? 29. Okay, so what is 4,000 times 29 percent? 1,160. There you go. There's the answer. Oh, this is difficult. Why? How is that difficult? You just have to write down the formula and then pull out the figures. <coughs> Bless you. Thank you. Does that make um, sense? Okay, so the tax is on the 
gain. So 20,000 less 16,000 times 29%, right? Okay, um... Okay. Uh, yeah, just give me one second. So that total is going to be the 18840. Okay. Okay, next. Then the change in the, the capital. Yeah, they didn't mention any change. It was zero again. There's nothing here. We read the question, remember? Okay. Okay, so four marks. Complete. Okay, let me just write this. Okay, what's the next question asking you for? I'm still busy with the previous question. Oh, you're still busy with that one? Yes. Okay. Ready? Yes. Okay, what's the next question asking you for? Calculate the OCF of Correct. both. Oh, gosh. Operating cash flow, right? Yes. Okay, it's 10 marks. So what do I need to do? I need to draw up the statement of comprehensive income. Work out the net profit. Do you agree? Yes. Okay, so let's go up to the top. And let's see what are you going to put in the actual profit calculation. So... Which figures are going to stand out for you? Well, the cost. Which cost? Of the old and the new. No, the variable and the fixed. Why? Because you're working on OCF. How do you work on OCF? It's from EBIT, right? Net profit after tax. Remember that? We just did that example before the break. Do you agree? I'm so confused. Okay, what are they asking you to work out here, Tammy? OCF. Do you have your notes yeah. in front of you? Yes. Do you still have chapter one open? Yeah, no. Okay, just turn a few pages back because we looked at TCF not so long ago. If you turn a few pages back, you'll see OCF. How do you work out OCF? You need a table and you need values from the income statement. Okay, statement of comprehensive income. Mm -hmm. Okay, because how do I calculate OCF? It's based on the sales and the fixed and the variable costs. Right? Yes. Okay, so what are we going to do? The EBDRT, that. Well, yes, but did they give you EBDRT in this question? Um, I don't think so. No, they didn't. They spoke about what in the question? Can't remember. Variable costs, fixed costs, and... Selling price. Yes. Okay, so what am I going to do? Draw up a table. Right, let me ask you about the new asset. Is the new asset going to change year by year by year or are the, are the sales constant? Well, it has variable. Variable costs, fixed costs, and what else? Output per annum. Yes. Do you agree? Yes. 
Okay, so mm -hmm. how many years am I going to have to account for for the new assets? How long does the asset last for? It doesn't tell us. It does. Wait. Yeah. You just read it. Uh, right? Yes. Okay, so we went to the question. You should have highlighted, underlined things that were important. So those are some of the things that were important. Because you've got the time frame. You need to know how long this project is. How long is the project? Five years. Five years. Okay, will you have different amounts or the same amounts for all five years? Same. The same amount. It doesn't change. Okay, so what am I going to need to do? I'm going to need to calculate the sales and the fixed and variable costs. Okay, for those years. Does that make sense? Yeah, but this is difficult. It's different to the first one we did. It's the same in terms of working at OCF. It's different in terms of what they've given you in the question. That's all. Okay, so am I still going to get EBIT here? Yes, but I just need to do a few more workings before I get it. Do you agree? <laughs> Do you agree? Yeah. Hey. Right, so this is the sales, fixed cost, and variable cost. So what are those amounts? What's the sales for the new asset? Sales for the new assets. Well, it's the output. Which is how much? Seven thousand. And how much are we selling those items for? Um, eight rand. So, how much is the total sales? Seven thousand times eight. Which is fifty-six thousand. Yes. Okay. What are the fixed costs? Um, six thousand. No fixed Nine, costs. Fourteen. 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 What are the variable costs? Three fifty. Or three rand fifty. Three fifty times. Seven thousand. Which is how much? Twenty-four thousand five hundred. Yes, there you go. You've got it. Okay, so all you had to do was multiply, and there you go. There's the first few bits. Right. So how do I get the EBIT? Sales minus the expenses. Right. Yes. Okay, and then what? What must I take off EBIT? Um, the, the depreciation. The interest. Okay, yeah. why don't we take out the depreciation? Don't know. What does it say? Oh my word, how am I going to remember all this? It's application, Tammy. It's application. You just need to remember the how-to. So how do you work out OCF? You need your accounting template for working out profit. That's all. You're working out profit. So you, then you need to think about profit. How do I work out profit? It's sales and it's expenses. Income and expenses, right? Okay, must you take out depreciation? No, because in this question, they said it was including the depreciation. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay.
Okay, so if it's including the depreciation, meaning they've already accounted for it, do you agree? Yes. Okay, so I don't need to account for it again. I just need to take off the interest, the EBIT, and then I need to work out the tax. Do you agree? Yeah. Okay, so... How much is the tax on that amount? Um, to go back to the question. Twenty nine. Yes, yeah, sir. Twenty nine thousand. Ah, uh, not twenty nine thousand. Twenty nine percent of seventeen thousand five hundred is what. <laughs> 5075. Yes. Okay, so can I get net profit off of tax? Yes. Yes, the one minus the other, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, what is the depreciation, Tammy? Well, we don't know. You need to work it out. What's the depreciation on the new asset? We don't know. You need to work it out. Come, look at the question. How do you work out depreciation on the new? The cost minus... <laughs> Is the cost minus? Straight line, no. Tammy. Straight line. How do I work out depreciation straight line method? Come. Can't remember. Ooh. Straight line is measured on cost. Right? So if you've got five years as a straight line method. How many years am I going to write off the asset? Five. What would the cost be? Thirty. Okay, so how much depreciation do I have each year? Hello? I'm asking you, how much depreciation do I have each year? Well, you have to take the cost times the number of years. Not times, divide. divide. Yes, so divide. Okay, does that make sense? Do you remember the accounting now? Yeah. Okay, so 6,000 is what? 30,000 divided by 5. It's 6,000 per year. Do you agree? Yeah. Okay, is this going to change? No. So from year one to year five, you're going to have an OCF of how much? One, eight, four, two, five. Yes, for how many years? Five. Yes. Got that? Yes, but this is difficult. It's not difficult. Don't say it's difficult, because if you do, then you're making it difficult. Okay. Right, it's not difficult. Okay, it just takes some time, okay, to get better at doing this, which is accounting, not finance. Okay, this is what you would have done in accounts when you were drawing up a statement of comprehensive income. The only finance here is this bit. Getting from the net profit to the OCF. Right, in financial management, we don't look at non-cash items. So do we add back the depreciation? Yes. Yes, so that's finance. The rest here is just some accounting. But why am I doing accounting in finance? Well, it's part of the question. Okay, remember, you wouldn't have got to FIN 3701 if you didn't pass FAC 1601. 
Mm. Okay, so you need the accounting knowledge to apply to finance, obviously. Okay, there's a link between the two subjects. Okay, the one gives the information, the one makes the decision. Makes okay. sense? Yeah. Okay, so now I want you to do the old assets. Okay, I'm going to give you the template, okay, which is what we just did. All right, I just looked at the template here. There's it. Sales, fixed cost variables, EBIT, interest, EBT tax, net profit tax, depreciation, and OCA. Right, so that's what I've got there. Do you see it? Okay, so now I want you to find the figures that I need to insert in the actual table. Right, what am I going to have? Well, I'm going to have different line items that need to be worked out. Okay, so your sales, then your fixed cost, then your variable cost. Okay, do you have this down? Mm -hmm. You got that? Yeah. Okay, so now I want you to find the figures. Give me figures to put in that table. Okay, so the cost we're going to put in as the 35. No. Why? What cost are they giving you? That's the cost of the old asset. You're not looking at the old asset. You're looking at sales, fixed cost, variable cost, EBIT, interest, tax. That's what you're looking at, right? Okay. Okay, so give me the sales. Line number one in your answer is sales. Do you agree? Okay. Okay, so what are the sales? Okay, so we're going to take the 2,600 units times eight. Which is what? Twenty thousand and eight hundred. There you go. Was that difficult? Yes. No, come on. It wasn't difficult. Sales. Okay. You had to work out the number of units times the quantity. Price times quantity, right? Yeah. Okay. Next. What do I want? Fixed costs. What are what are the fixed costs? Go back. Um, six hundred and thousand. There you go. That's all. Okay, give me the variable cost, Tammy. Four N. Times what? The, um, two thousand six hundred. Yes. Gives you what? Ten thousand four hundred. Exactly. There you go. Was that difficult? Uh, hey, now work this out, Tammy. Come, you should be able to do the rest now. I'll put this up. You might need the rates okay the eb i t four thousand four hundred yes okay i need to see your template i thought you had that you said you had it no i thought you meant can i see it on my screen Okay, my interest is zero, so the EBT will also be 4,400 times the tax. What do you get? Well, what is my tax? 29%. Okay. 
Okay, so times twenty nine percent. One two seven six. Okay. All right, the challenge comes in now here when you're trying to work out the depreciation. Okay, because the question gave you the fixed costs that were including the depreciation. Do you agree? Yes. All right, so I want to know how much depreciation does the old asset still have? Okay, so in other words, how old is the asset now and how old or how many years does the asset still have left? That's what I'm trying to work out. Do you agree? I'm not sure. Okay, so both machines have a useful life of how many years? Five. Correct. That's what they said in the question, right? Mm -hmm. At the beginning, they tell you that over the past seven years, okay, you've maintained assets, or not assets, sales and profits, Constant, right? Do you agree? Mm -hmm. Okay, so yes. you know that you're looking at a period of? 12. Well, we don't no. know. Where are we? Okay, are we are we two years into it, three years into it, four years into it? How, how many years are we into the actual life of the project? Does that make sense? No. Okay, because in limited is a manufacturer. Okay, over the past seven years, they've been operating and stable um, sales and profits, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the point I'm trying to make here, it's not clear how old the existing asset is. Do you agree? Yes. So how can I work that out? I need to look at the accumulated depreciation. Does that make sense? Accumulated depreciation is going to tell you how old the asset is. Do you agree? Mm. Yes. Okay, so if I'm looking at the age of the asset, okay, I'm going to have to consider its cost and its carrying value. Okay, so the cost and the carrying value gives me that. Okay, we saw the cost was 35, you saw the accumulator was 19 because the carrying was 16. Okay, so you know that as it stands, in the question, you have 35 cost, you have book value of 6. So the difference is 19. 19,000 is the accumulated depreciation. I now need to determine how old is this asset if the asset has 19,000 Rand worth of depreciation. Do you agree? Okay. Okay, so they told us the asset is going to be depreciated over how many years? Seven. No, five. Okay, so if it's five years, what's 35,000 divided by five? Seven. 7,000 per year. Mm. Do you agree? Yes. Okay, so if you've got 7,000 per year and you've got 19,000 Rand accumulated depreciation, we need to know how old is this asset. Do you agree? Two years. Well, not actually two years. It's a bit... More. More. More, yes. Okay, because two years worth of depreciation will give you 14,000. Do you agree? Yeah, so it's 2.714. 2.57. 7. 5 over 7. That's what it is. So you say 19,000 divided by 7,000. Yes, is? I get 2,7. 19,000 divided by 7,000. Gives you 2.714. Yeah, see, 714 is 5 over 7. What's 5 over 7? Same thing, 0.7124. Uh -uh. Okay. Do you agree? 
Okay. All right. So two years, two years. So two times seven gives you what? Fourteen thousand. How much do you want in the last year? Five thousand over seven thousand. Do you agree? Two. Okay. So if I'm looking at the age of the asset, the asset's age is two and five over seven years or two comma seven one four two eight dot 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 years old does it make sense mm -hmm. yeah okay so how much time do you still have left well two point three nine well, two nine yeah two point two nine which is two and two over seven years remaining that's what that's what you've got there you go you got it Okay, so now if I'm looking at depreciation, okay, how much depreciation will I have for this asset in the first year? How much depreciation do I have every year, Tammy? Tammy, how many depreciation every year? Seven. Yes, yeah. so in the first year I'll have 7,000, in the second year I'll have 7,000, do you agree? Yes. And in the last year I'm going to have how much? Seven. 2,000, the last bit. Okay, because how much, how much must the depreciation, add, how much must the depreciation add up to? 19. No, 335. So 35 is 19,000 plus 7,000 plus 7,000 plus 2,000. Do you agree? Oh, jeez. Um, that gives me the total accumulated depreciation. Okay, because how old is the asset? We just saw that in the question. How old is the asset? Two years and five over seven. Yes, which represents how much depreciation? 19,000. Okay, remember from your accounting, depreciation is the write-off of the asset's cost over time. Do you agree? Okay. So if I'm writing off 7,000 every year, if I add an extra year, I'm going to have 19 plus 7, which is how much? 26. Then if I write off for another year, add another 7, how much do I have? 33. Okay, so how much do I have in the last year? 2, because 33,000 needs to be added to 2,000 to get the 35, because you can't write off more than the value of the assets. Make sense? No, but this is really difficult. Okay, I agree with this particular working. The depreciation was the tricky bit in this question. Okay, because you had to consider the age of the asset. But the rest wasn't so bad. Okay, so yes, this is tricky. Okay. Right, so OCF is what then, Tammy, in each of the years? How do I get the OCF now? The profit minus the oh, profit plus depreciation. Yes, there you go. That's it. Okay, and those are the values that you have for each of the different years. For which asset? The old. Okay, mm -hmm. so now I can write that down. Let's highlight that. Let's put that there. Okay, equals that amount equals that amount right so the incremental cash flow is the difference between the two do you agree same as what we've always done new minus old right yes okay so new OCF minus old OCF okay so this minus that gives me that answer. And I do that for all of the years. Got that? Yes. 
Okay, and that's 1.3. Okay, because 1.3 asked you for. Uh, let me go back. Oh, we're doing 1.2 actually. Okay, then 1.2 works out. Okay, so 1.2 is all those tables. 1.3 is what are the incremental operating cash flows? It's two marks, so what did you have to do? Just subtract the old from the new. Exactly. Okay, so there's the new, there's the old, there's the incremental, and that's it. I think there was one more question, a 1.4. Let's go back and have a look. There's it. All right, so here's again decision making. Should the company purchase the new machine? Base your answer on NPV. How do I calculate NPV, Tammy? Um, I need cash flows. I need to discount them back. Yes. Okay, so what is the cash flow going to look like? Well, I need to draw a timeline. Okay, so if I draw a timeline, I'm going to draw... The initial investment. Which was what? Um, please go, okay, triple one six zero. Yes. And then you've got all those OCFs, right? Yes. And then you just need this. The TCFs, yes. right? Then you'll have yes. all the cash flows, then you can plug it into your formula, your calculator. Do yes. You? Okay, so yeah. I need the TCF. Okay, did the question give you any information about the residual value of the old asset? I don't think so. The old asset? The old asset, Tanya? Um, they told you this, residual value of 20. Okay, so that's the residual value. In fact, realize value the residual. Well, re realizable is what you what you have available, what you can sell it for. Okay. Okay. So again, you, if you if you had to assume zero, then TCF would be zero, right? Because there wouldn't be any after tax process from the new or the old. Do you agree? Okay. Okay. Which which generally isn't the right answer because obviously you need to do some working here. Okay, so I'm going to show you this, okay? I'm going to assume that the old has no value. Right, and then here with the proceeds from the sale of the old. Okay, asterisk here, assuming this is the resale value at the end of the project's life. Okay, again. We're making the same assumption as we did before in the previous one we're assuming assuming we can still sell at the same amount after the end of the project that's what you're saying Okay, you're assuming that I can still sell it for 20,000. So I can sell it for 20,000 now, I can also sell it for 20,000 later. Okay, that's the only assumption that you need to make in order to get a working here. Okay, would the old asset have a book value? Yes. No, not at the end of its useful life. The book value will be zero, right? Okay. So will you pay tax on the full amount? No. Yes, you will. How much is the tax? 29%. No, What's 29%? Tax on the full amount. Hey? Why are we paying tax on the full amount? Because the gain would have been proceeds <coughs> less carrying value. Proceeds is 20,000 minus zero carrying value because the asset is worth, the asset is worth nothing. Right? Isn't that how you work out a, ta a ta taxable capital gain? It's the gain that's taxed, right? Okay. Okay. 
So 20,000 times 29% is 5,800. This minus that gives you 14,200. Okay, so what is my terminal cash flow? Minus 14,200. Okay. Okay. Right, so again, in this particular question, I can do two workings. Right, I can assume that there's no value, meaning the TCF is zero. Okay, so let me show that. Okay, if you assume the old asset has no value after five years, all right, then you'll have this. You'll have the side calculation, okay, where you'll have zero here, you'll have zero there, and you'll have zero there. There's going to be zeros for all of that. Okay, so your TCF would have been zero. Okay, so if you had to do the calculation using your, your um, financial calculator, okay, we're then going to work out an amount of NPV. Okay, so NPV comes out to 33,191 based on this cash flow. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so based on those cash flows, if I just count the future cash flows back in time, I get that answer. Okay, assuming no value for the terminal cash flow. So in other words, terminal cash flow is zero. Right, if you assumed that the terminal cash flow had a value, okay, which is what we assumed here, right, then I'm going to change this amount over here the TCF here will be minus 14,200. Okay, so the final cash flow over here would have been equals minus 14,200. Give me that value. Right, so if I use my financial calculator, okay, check this one, Tammy. You type it into your calculator as well. What NPV do you get? Uh, let me just one 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 six uh, negative eight three oh one cash flow eight three oh one cash flow one three three oh one What's your NPV? 23144. Oh, I get 24374. But let, that year 4, is it supposed to be 13 or 15? That's 15. Year, year four's cash flow is 15. There's it. Okay, let me try again. Triple one six zero negative cash flow. Eight three zero one cash flow. Eight three zero one cash flow. One three three zero one cash flow. One five three zero one cash flow. One one oh one cash flow. Ten percent. Second function MPV. Okay, yeah, I get two, four, three, seven, four. You also get it, eh? Yes. Okay, awesome. Right, does it make sense? Yeah, one day it will. Okay, so don't, don't be so negative. Okay, is it it's really that bad? Yes. Okay, you need to just think about it logically. That's the best advice I can give you. Okay, stick to the formulae, okay, in terms of workings, how we do calculations, and then just apply it to the question. Okay, because you'll see, I'm literally going to do questions like this time and time again. You don't change the way you do things. Okay, the textbook shows you how to do the calculation. We're just applying it to the question that we've been given. Make sense? 
Okay. Okay, so if I'm looking at this particular project, I will accept it because NPV is greater than zero, even if I assume this. 20,000 for the old. Okay, if you assume it has no value, then it's a simpler calculation because everything is zero here. Then you'll have that. It's still positive. It's either 24,374 or 33,191. And then you'll accept the project. Do you agree? So both workings give um, a final answer of accept the project. Do you agree? Replace the asset. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Okay. And that's what you're looking at here. Right. And that was 1.4. Makes sense? Yeah. Okay. All right. And that was the long question. That was the tough one. Okay, um, I think this might have been your assignment actually. Question two, it, yeah. looks, sim it looks similar, is it? Can, can we check that quickly? I think this might have been the assignment. Because sometimes you <coughs> tend to use those um, exam questions as your assignment questions. Um, I'm looking for, uh, this is uh, Fin yeah. 701. Yes, it is that one. Is it exactly the same? Well, just quickly put that question up again. Okay, do you have the assignment in front of you? Yes. Okay, here's the question in the exam. Is it the same? Yeah, it looks like it. Um, this was your assignment, 10,035. Uh, do you have the same answers? Yeah, sales 30%. Yeah. Okay, the question's exactly the same, except the, um, oh, the required is different though. Oh, no, the required's the same. Yeah. 2.1, calculate the number of shares purchased under the proposed structure. That's the same. Uh, what else? Nine marks, the EPS. Nine marks, the EPS, that's the same. Calculate the WAC, 9 marks. Calculate the WAC, 9 marks. That's the same. And 2 marks for that. That's also the same. Okay, so we don't have to do this question because we've already done it during the semester. Yeah. Okay, I did assignment 2 with you, which was literally question 2 out of last year's May, June 2016 paper. Okay. okay, it was literally the exact same thing. Copy paste. All right, so yeah, yeah. so you need to tend to use questions um, for assignments from past papers looking at that. Okay, Tammy. Okay. All right, so what I will do is I'll attach um, the assignment to workings, okay, to this file. So then when I send you the file, you'll have the work that we did in the actual assignment as well. Okay. okay. All right. So then, the um, the assignment two from this semester is actually also um, a support, uh, let's say, for this particular question. Okay, from the actual exam. Okay. Okay, Tammy, happy. No. Why? I'm more stressed now. Okay, you just need to relax. Don't don't stress yourself out. Okay, because remember, these are the first exams that we've been looking at. Okay, today was the first time that I've looked at these long questions with you. Last week was the first time I did the multiple choice with you. Okay, okay so don't panic if it is a bit new or different now, because it is new and different. Do you agree? Yeah. All right, it gets better with more practice and with more time and with more effort. Okay, so... What I'll ask you to do for next time is the multiple choice from this paper. Okay, so May, June 2016, I looked at multiple choice with you last week. Okay, so going through some multiple choice now shouldn't be as bad because I've already gone through one paper with you. Okay, okay next week I'm going to go through the multiple choice and check the questions that you've done to see how did it go. Okay, and then we okay. can look at the questions that you struggled with and we can try fix um, maybe the problem areas or things that you're not understanding. And then when we do another past paper, which will be the third time you do multiple choice, 
it should be easier. And then the fourth time will even be easier. And then the fifth time will be easier than that. And it should get better and better until you write the exam. Okay. Okay. Right, so don't be so hard on yourself. Obviously, this is the first time you looked at the long questions, right? Besides yeah. this, besides assignment two. Okay, so this was assignment two. Okay, in semester one, 2017. Okay, so I covered this question with you, right, when we did the assignment. So maybe what, what you should do as practice is, I've already gone through this question with you when I did the assignment. It's been a few weeks now since we've looked at the assignment. So if you had to do this question now on your own, how far would you get with it? See, that's the big question mark. Because if you can do more of it this time, then that's better than what you did previously. Okay, because we looked at this together not so long ago. Okay, with Kyle and, and everyone else, right? We all looked yeah. at this. Do you agree? Yes. Okay, so now if I'm looking at this question again, because this is a copy paste from your assignment. So if you had to do this question now, you'll probably understand and do a lot better than when you first did it where you had no clue what to do, right? Mm. Okay, so maybe do that as well, right, as practice. Okay, because you have the video from assignment two. It was uploaded. You've, you have that resource. So if I was you, I would actually try do this question now, okay, as a new question and see do I or can I work it out? If I can, great. If I can't, then I need to go back and check why can't I, right? Because then I must have missed something from assignment two when we were looking at it. Makes sense? Yeah. Okay, so just keep moving in the right direction. Okay, don't worry now because you've got time. This, uh, what, let's see, your exam is 19th of May. Okay, so today is the, what is today's date? The 12th, the 12th of, um, of April. So there's more than a month to revise and to prepare. Okay, and we've already now looked at two past papers. Okay, I've covered October, November 2016 with you, and now we've just completed May 2016. The only thing we need to check here is the multiple choice, okay, because question two we've done. So the last question in this paper is complete. Is that all right? Okay. Okay. okay, so don't stress. You've got time. You've got just over a month to revise and to get through as many questions as you can. Okay. Okay, Tammy. Right, so for next week, I want you to attempt the multiple choice from May 2016. Okay. So you've got answers to this question in May 2016 because we covered it in assignment two. Okay, I'm not going to go through this again because we've already gone through it. Okay. okay, but I would recommend you do it as practice just to see if you would be able to do it. That's the big question mark. Okay. okay. Right, but don't panic, there's time. Okay, so don't stress. Today was the first time that I looked at the long questions from the exam with you. Next week and the week after should be a bit better as it goes. Okay. Okay. 